Hi, I'm Tracy. And I'm Graham. And together, we're, we're the, the Flying, Flying Finnies. So we are a couple from Australia and we are on a quest to get to 60 countries by the time we turn 60. We're in the beautiful city of Candy. Um, we're really surprised by this city, it's gorgeous. And today, we literally have 24 hours here, so we are doing a one day in Candy. So Candy is a bit of a spiritual capital of Sri Lanka. It's the second biggest city in the country. We've hired a tuk-tuk and, and we're going to get around to about five or six different sites today. Also, hopefully, we're going to pick up some tickets to go on a train tomorrow to get to Ella. Yeah, we're trying hard to get some tickets to do the <laughs> Candy to Ella blue train, which is quite famous um, and apparently goes, it's one of the most beautiful train journeys in the world. So fingers crossed that that comes off and we are in the hands of Rashad, our tuk-tuk driver today, who's just going to give us a bit of um, an overview. Yeah, an overview um, of this beautiful city. So behind us is Candy Lake and it is huge. Um, we don't have enough time to take a walk around. Is that a good or a bad thing? Yeah, we might have a time. You never know. <laughs> but it certainly gives us a good vantage to see this beautiful city and it's kind of a plateau that's surrounded by mountains so hopefully a lot of wonderful vantage points to see today. Rashad obliged us with a bit of a wander around the city ahead of seeing the main sites. We love to sit and watch people getting about their daily lives and in terms of travel add so much more context and reality to our adventures. It also gave us the opportunity to check out a couple of areas that we'd visit later on in the day. An unmissable part of the candy landscape is the Bahira Wakanda Buddha statue. It can be seen from almost anywhere in candy and night or day seems to provide a presence to everything happening in the city and the surrounding areas. We have just climbed to the top of that beautiful white Buddha statue that you can see from town and I'm giving you the view that the Buddha's got from up here which is quite spectacular. How's the serenity? Serenity's pretty good. It's gorgeous up here. All of these mountains in the distance shrouded by cloud. It's just got this feeling of peacefulness. Very calm. The statue is a relatively new construction, having only been opened in January 1993. Sitting two kilometres from the city centre and towering almost 27 metres high, it was a great place to visit, and the relatively few people there with us gave us an opportunity to really enjoy the sights laid out in front of us. Another reason we came to Kandy was to visit the deeply sacred Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic and we weren't disappointed. This UNESCO World Heritage Site was our 20th to date. Spiritually, it holds value to Buddhists around the world who come here to worship where the left tooth of the Gautama Buddha is enshrined. Tooth has served as a symbol of Sri Lankan royalty and its current resting place is a royal palace. The beauty of this structure both inside and out is spectacular and we spent hours wandering the halls and the museum, marvelling at the ornate decorations. With daylight fading fast, Tracy and I decided to do something we rarely do, and that was to watch a cultural show. It was tucked around the corner from the Royal Palace, was well priced, and the display of dance and athleticism was truly an investment in time and one that we would highly recommend. a lovely sunrise from our window in our room. 
The following morning we awoke to what would be one of our most challenging and yet one of the best travel days we have ever experienced. Today we are trying to go on the iconic blue train from Candy to Ella. You will have all seen this train probably on Instagram or YouTube before. It's quite famous in Sri Lanka. It's supposed to be one of the world's most beautiful train journeys. It's quarter to 11 in the morning and it's already been quite a day. So we have been trying to get tickets for a reserved seat on this train for a week or so. There were no tickets left available on the website. Um, we tried to get tickets at the railway station yesterday. There were none available then. And we were offered help from various um, independent parties to get tickets <laughs> uh, for today's train. We are currently at a train station called Peridonia. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. We're not at Candy. So we weren't able to secure tickets. I'll let Graham go into that in a moment. But we came up with a hack recommended to us from somebody's blog and I'll try to find out whose it was. But essentially what we've now done is we have traveled to a train station that is kind of one stop down the line towards Ella. And we're gonna jump on the train in the reverse direction from here to get an unreserved seat and then just not get off the train when we get to Candy. I hope that makes sense because most people end up standing in the unreserved section and it's seven plus hours on the train. So we really, 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 really don't want to stand on the train for that long. Anyway, so here we are, we're waiting. Let's hope we get on the right train here. Let's hope this little plan works out. And if not, I guess we'll update you. Bottom line is that if you want to get a reserved second class ticket, even at literally the last minute, it is possible. And there are a lot of online third party websites that will allow you to do it. The only issue is that you will be paying through the nose and possibly up to $45 US per person to get down to Ella. What we've been told is that to get a reserved second class ticket at a reasonable price, you literally have to book 30 days in advance. And given the situation that was occurring in Sri Lanka, that just wasn't an option for us. So despite trying to book tickets at Colombo when we first arrived, no options available. We were also approached by people at the train station offering to assist us in getting tickets through what appeared to be some fairly dodgy practices, including buying the tickets of already existing passengers. We have decided that the best way forward is to try out Peridinia, see if we can get ourselves an unreserved second class seat. <laughs> and then we're going to have to grab hold of that seat for as long as we possibly can to get down to Weller. Our plan didn't work. Didn't get a seat. You ready for seven hours of this? Welcome to the next seven months aboard the train. Oh, I'm dreading this already. <laughs> but our bags are in luggage. So maybe going to the station one up wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst either. We ended up standing for about four and a half hours of this seven hour adventure. It seemed like a long time at the time, but looking back, it was a relatively minor inconvenience for what turned out to be a remarkable train journey. Amazing smell. Should have bought some. I'm finally glad that we brought all of our cold weather gear because as we start going up into the mountains, it is getting quite chilly now. But the great thing is, of course, that we finally have chairs. After about four and a half hours, uh, we can now see why most of the blogs said try to get a reserve seat before you come to the country plate. And we tried really hard. But now that we're seasoned and watching all of this beautiful countryside roll past, 
Makes the last four and a half hours worthwhile. We can also enjoy some of the coffee that the local vendors are bringing around. So, cheers to that. The total cost of our train journey was about three Australian dollars per person, a total saving of most probably 38 US dollars per person given some of the publicised web rates. Pretty important for those on a budget. There is a lot of really good advice available to travellers on the best way to position yourself to secure a seat. Our advice is to monitor the Sri Lanka Rail website and check out blogs like The Common Wanderer who appear to provide great up-to-date content. Join us in our next video as we explore the picturesque township of Ella. We climb to some of the highest peaks in Sri Lanka, enjoy tea in a hillside factory and splash in the Rwanda waterfalls.